Today's Saints draft rumors come in from NFL.com and ESPN as they both put out a mock draft. And for today's video, I'm going to be diving into my reaction and then giving some analysis and sharing my thoughts on those picks. So for the NFL.com one, it's a one-round mock draft. For ESPN, it's a two-round mock draft. So that means we got three players to talk about in today's video. But before we dive into all that, I'm calling you out, Hootat Nation. In terms of the notification participation, what's going on? We got the Noti Gang, and you're telling me you don't want to be a part of it? We only have 14.5% of our subscribers that have turned their notifications on. And only 10.1% have set them to all. So I'm calling all of you out because we got over 25,000 subs here. Why should you turn your notifications on? Because we got breaking news updates, rumors, and all sorts of awesome content. We got weekly live shows. Last week we went live twice. That's why you should turn your noties on. You'll never miss a video and you'll never miss out on any of our interactive and free content. And the most important thing of all, you'll know more ball than your homies, your squad, and all of the lads and all of your friends. So trust me, you better turn your noties on before I find out who didn't turn them on first. So let's dive into the mock draft. We're going to start off with NFL.com. Pretty standard here, except for one thing. You see Caleb Williams going number one overall, no shocker. Jane Daniels actually hops to number two, and he's going to go to Washington. But that big shocking thing is right at the bottom left of your screen. Drake May going to the Atlanta Falcons as they traded up with the Los Angeles Chargers. So that's kind of how the first few picks shake out. And then you get to where the New Orleans Saints are selecting at number 14 overall. Byron Murphy, I think he would be an interesting target for the New Orleans Saints. Jared Verse, also a really uh, intriguing guy that could be really destructive and very uh, helpful in New Orleans. Leitu Latu, the edge rusher productition machine. Dude, this guy puts up unbelievable numbers, and he is an absolute force to be reckoned with. But here's what Lance Zerline of NFL.com said about the UCLA edge rusher. He said that this pick could hinge on the medical evaluations of Latu, who had a serious neck injury at Washington before moving on to UCLA. Alabama's Dallas Turner had great upside, but... Latu is a technician with NFL caliber rush moves already in his bag. Now, I would love Latu in New Orleans, but this would fit that stereotype of let's go get an uh, injured player that isn't going to really do a ton of production. But this is a guy who will give you a ton of production. I mean, not only am I worried about the medicals, that is something to think about. But when you have somebody who can do what you're seeing on your screen right now, when you have somebody who can put up the level of production, 23 and a half sacks in two seasons. Over, tw over 30 tackles for loss. Five forced fumbles. Three pass breakups. Two interceptions. All of that in just two seasons. I understand that the medicals are something to be worried about. However, this is a very special player who has a lot of awesome traits. And at the end of the day, he could really help this pass rush, which needs to be much more productive. They need to be a lot more effective, and they need to be a more dangerous unit. They need to get faster. They need to be more, become more explosive, get younger. And at the end of the day, they need to finish their dinner. So many times did we see the defensive line or did whoever's rushing the passer get to the quarterback, but they never finished their plays. They never got home. They didn't get the sacks enough. And that's why I believe Leitu Latu would be a great pick. So I really do th agree with Lance Zerline on that pick. But here's what you have to do. You cannot give him the Zach Bond treatment. You can't try and turn Leitu Latu into a drop back into coverage linebacker. Let him put his freaking hand in the dirt and let him rush the damn quarterback because that's what he does best. If you go and get a player like Leitu Latu, you see it right here. You cannot give him the Zach Bond treatment. That is the biggest mistake that the Saints made with Bond. Look what happened whenever he got to put his hand in the dirt and go and hit a quarterback. He was much, much better. But sound off for me, Saints fans. What should New Orleans do in the first round of the draft? Should they try and draft an offensive player or a defensive player? I want to hear from you, Saints fans, because I know that y'all are the smartest fan base in all of sports. So let me know in the comment section. All right, coming up next, we got the ESPN2 round mock draft where he had the Saints selecting some pretty intriguing players. 
Going to give you a hint. They're both offensive weapons. But before we dive into that, I want to give a special shout out to Prize Picks. And if here's the deal: if you guys tune out the next, you know, 60 seconds or so, just know all this information is in the comment section in the description of this video. Because I love you, go to chatsports.com/clns. Plug in promo code CLNS to get a first time deposit match up to $100. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy, and it's the number one DFS app in North America, and that's not by accident. You just pick two to six players, choose more or less based on their projected stat lines, and voila, you can win yourself some real money that you can spend on Bourbon Street, at Raising Canes, or on any other Saints gear or stuff this offseason. So in terms of some projections that I'm rolling with for that big game out in Las Vegas, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes more than a half passing yard. That's right, half a passing yard. Price Picks runs all these awesome deals and promos for big games or Taco Tuesdays or Demons and Goblin projections. There's all sorts of cool things that you got to check out that make Price Picks so much more fun than any daily fantasy sports app out there. I'm also taking Isaiah Pacheco, half a rushing or receiving touchdown. I think he's going to find the end zone. And Brock Purdy, I like what that kid can do. I think he can sling the rock really, really well. So I'm taking him to take more than 248 and a half passing yards. I don't care what you do. Just whether you fade my picks, whether you tail my picks, just do it with prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Plug in promo code CLNS to get a first time deposit match up to $100. Shout out to prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, let's shift gears to the ESPN mock draft from Matt Miller. No shockers here. Caleb Williams won. Drake May at two. Jane Daniels does go three. Malik Neighbors, an LSU product, got number five. Roma Dunze goes number six to the Giants. Joe Alt, which is an intriguing target that I really like for New Orleans. He goes no, number seven. Terrian Arnold heads over to Atlanta to join the Dirty Birds. Olu Fashanu, he's a big guy out of Penn State. He's headed up to Chicago to help protect Caleb Williams. And Talis Fuaga, he rounds it out the top ten out of Oregon State. So let's get to where the Saints are selecting. You see Dallas Turner goes at 11. Bo Nix. If these two picks happen, just want to say this. If these two picks happen, Bo Nix in the first round and J.J. McCarthy in the first round, I, I don't know what I'll do because I don't think that either of those guys should be drafted until at least round three. I think that they are both not good quarterbacks. But anyway, back to the Saints pick. Brock Bowers, number 14, the tight end out of Georgia. And the guy's production is stellar. Last year, it was much, much better. Obviously, this year, a little bit of a down year, but... He's still a really talented player. He's a once-in-a-lifetime uh, type of prospect. He has such great traits, has a lot of athletic ability, a very dynamic uh, pass catcher, 6'4", 240 pounds. Let's dive into what Matt Miller said about this pick. He said that the Saints miss out on all the quarterbacks and top wide receivers in this scenario, but they land a legitimate top 10 talent in Brock Bowers. Built in the mold of George Kittle or Sam Laporta, those are pretty two good guys to be compared to, Bowers had 56 catches and six scores in 2023. And he left college with 26 career receiving touchdowns to go along with five rushing scores. The six foot four, 240 pounder shows great strength when asked to block, but his real value is as a middle of the field receiver. Where he can put up or where he can post up safeties and run past linebackers. My question and my issue with that pick is do the Saints really need a tight end? Is it at number 14 overall, your first round pick, is that really the position that you need most? Let's dive into the depth chart here because Juwan Johnson's your tight end one. Taysom Hill, you're not getting rid of him. Foster Morrow? I know that a lot of people are upset about that Jags catch, or drop, excuse me, but he's on the roster and he signed a multi-year deal. Jimmy Graham, he's going to be a free agent. You got a couple guys on the practice squad, so I just don't know if you need to tie it in, but that being said, I don't hate the pick because if you do draft, draft Brock Bowers, excuse me, you will have to say goodbye to Foster Morrow or Juwan Johnson. Taysom Hill's not going anywhere. Unless he gets traded to the Denver Broncos or unless some crazy things happen, Taysom Hill is going to be in New Orleans. Juwan Johnson, 
I'm a very big believer in. I really like the player. He's a wide receiver turned uh, tight end, but he doesn't do as well in the blocking. Foster Morrow, he has a he had that drop issue against the Jags. He has never been a true tight end one. So those are things that you got to consider. If you do go Bowers, you're going to have to get rid of one of those two players. So because I don't think the Saints are going to want to do that, I don't know if they would make this pick. So that's why it's a draft rumor, because it's something that people are talking about, so we're talking about it here. So be in charge for me. Get in the draft room, get in the war room, whatever you want to call it. Would you draft Brock Bowers, whether it's the first round or second round? Just give me a simple yes or no in the comment section, and let's keep continuing forward with the ESPN mock draft, because this is a two-rounder, so... We're just going to kind of speed through these ones. Jared Verse, he's a Saints draft target. He goes to the Colts, the pick after New Orleans. Byron Murphy, I like that player. He's headed to Seattle. Brian Thomas Jr. is headed to Cincinnati to team up with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Tyler Guyton, he's a name that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some Saints analysts and mock draft people have mentioned before. Amarius Mims, another offensive lineman to look out for. Kool-Aid McKinstry. He's headed, to Alabama, uh, he's headed to Houston from Alabama. Keon Coleman has been mocked to the Saints a handful of times. He heads to Dallas. And rounding out the first round, Cooper DeJean, DeJean, whatever it is, he's headed up to Green Bay. Troy Fontenau, or Fontenau, he's moving down to Tampa Bay. J.C. Latham, that's a name that I've seen a lot of Saints fans talk about. He's going out to the desert. Jackson Power Johnson's. It, or Johnson, excuse me, is headed up to the Buffalo. Lay to Latu in this draft, mock draft is going to Detroit. I think it's actually a really good fit in Dan Campbell's defense. Darius Robinson, Jordan Morgan round out, and Xavier Worthy round out the first round. Lad McConkey, the wide receiver out of Georgia, is going to, uh, to the NFC South in Carolina. Nate Wiggins, he's going to be pick number 35. I like that cornerback out of Clemson. Shout out producer Chip. Adne Mitchell, he's another name I've talked about here before. Chop Robinson, that's a name I've discussed before. Kamari Lattiser, that or Lassiter, excuse me, that's a name we've talked about. Interesting that Michael Penix Jr. in this mock draft fell behind Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy. I wonder if that has anything to do with his lack of participation in the Senior Bowl game, like the actual game at the end of the week or end of the weekend. Uh, Troy Franklin, I really, really like that wide receiver prospect, but in the second round, excuse me, in second round, uh, Matt Miller had Xavier Leggett going to New Orleans. Now, this is a player who I think when you try and think about the top wide receiver prospects in this draft, he's not one that's going to get named. He's not one that's going to get mentioned. But the production's pretty damn good, guys. 71 rece receptions, over 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, and over 17 yards per catch. I really like this player, and I think that he could fill a big position in need in that Michael Thomas role. So let's dive into Matt Miller's thoughts on Xavier Leggett. He says that veteran wide receiver Michael Thomas is expected to hit free agency and might not return, leaving the Saints with a hole opposite of Chris Olave. He's got Rashid Shahid, but I see what he's saying. Leggett is a powerful six foot one and 227 pounds and has an ability to play inside or outside. He's a mobile, or he's a master on crossing routes and averaged 17.6 yards per reception in 2023. Now, when you're talking about a Michael Thomas replacement, it really couldn't get any closer. Same height, 25 pounds, excuse me, 15 pounds of difference. Xavier Leggett is a Michael Thomas pro, or like mold. He, he is that mold of that player. I really, really like this pick. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to do a little bit more homework on this player because I like the numbers. I like what I saw about him. Some of the highlights and some of the tape that I have watched just getting ready for this video. It was really entertaining. I think he could be a fun fit in New Orleans, especially with Clint Kubiak if he is hired as the offensive coordinator. Obviously, we know the 49ers still have to play in the Super Bowl, so the Saints are currently expected to hire Clint Kubiak, but... That is likely going to be the case, and he's likely going to be the offensive coordinator in New Orleans. And if that's the case, I think that this player could really add a dynamic element to the offense. He could, and Kubiak could get creative and use the pass catchers of Rashid Shahid, Chris Olave, A.T. Perry, and on top of that, you could also get um, you could also get Xavier Leggett. Excuse me, you also get him involved on that offense. Not to mention Taysom Hill. Not to mention 
Alvin Kamara, not to mention Kendra Miller. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it would just load up the offense. But I still think the trenches are something that I would address. Here's the deal, though. You address it in free agency. I really like going this route in the draft. So are you ready, Saints fans, if you're excited for the 2024 NFL draft? It's just a couple months away. Give me a me down in the comment section. This way I also can know who made it to the end of the video and who is a real one. And if you haven't already, turn your notifications on. I'm watching you. You better hit it. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. No matter where you are or how you're watching, y'all stay golden. See you next time.